Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God praise all over the building. Thank you, mighty God. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. Thankful for the lives that are being touched and changed. The power of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. It's good to see everybody here today. Amen. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. I said we serve a great, big, wonderful God. There's not anything too hard for Him. Let me tell you, we've all failed Him at times, but He's never failed us. And He deserves our praise and our worship. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles. Want to go to the Word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let me remind you that today at 3 o'clock, there's a Spanish service right here in the sanctuary. Amen. Those of you that would like to come and support that, amen. We are excited about what the Lord is doing in our Spanish work. Praise God. Acts chapter number 16. If you've got your Bibles with you, Acts chapter number 16. And I want to begin reading the 25th verse. We'll read just a couple of scriptures. Acts chapter 16, verse number 25. And at midnight, everybody say at midnight. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. They weren't quiet about it. They weren't intimidated or ashamed of it. The Bible said at midnight, when everybody else was sleeping, they started praising. And the Bible said that the prisoners heard them. <coughs> and suddenly, <coughs> there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. There's something that happens when you forget about your problems. You forget about your bad, dark situations, and you just make up your mind, I'm going to praise God. It doesn't matter where you are today. It doesn't matter what you're going through. If you just learn to praise God, God can break you out of it. <laughs> Jesus, I love you. Thank you for your word, and thank you for all your wonderful people that are here today. Pray you to anoint me to preach, anoint your people to receive the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the fear of the Lord. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote a poem entitled Rainy Days. He said, the day is cold and dark and dreary. It rains and the wind is never weary. The vine still clings to the moldering wall, but at every gust the dead leaves fall. And the day is dark and dreary. My life is cold and dark and dreary. It rains and the wind is never weary. You ever feel like that? My thoughts still cling to the moldering past, but the hopes of youth fall thick in the blast, and the days are dark and dreary. Be still, sad heart, and cease repining. Behind the clouds, the sun's still shining. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Be still, sad heart, and cease repining. Behind the clouds, the sun still shining. Thy fate is the common fate of all. Into each life some rain must fall. Some days must be dark and dreary. I want to preach this morning if God will help me on God's answer for rainy days. God's answer for rainy days. Days when it seems dark. Days when the wind doesn't seem to stop blowing. Days 
when the rain won't stop falling, days when you're discouraged, days when you're depressed, days uh, when things aren't going your way, days uh, when you don't know how you're going to climb up out of the hole, days, uh, amen, when your mind won't shut off and it just goes on and on and on and on and on and it seems like the sun's never going to shine again. I'm going to tell you God uh, has given a remedy, uh, amen, for those that live in rainy days uh, and that remedy uh, is this word uh, that I want to preach about this morning, uh, Called praise, P R A I S E, praise. Sometimes you just gotta suck it up and praise God, anyhow. Be still, sad heart, and cease repining. Behind the clouds, the sun's still shining. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 15. Verse number one, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Verse number 20. So Moses is out there singing. Really what he's doing is testifying. Amen. And all of a sudden we get down to verse number 20. And the Bible said, And Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand and all the women went out after her with timbrel and with dances and Miriam answered them sing ye to the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea this, this chapter right here children of Israel it's called the song of Moses they just come out of Egypt, three and a half million of them. They'd been in bondage 430 years. They'd been beaten. They'd been blooded. They'd been persecuted. They'd been building cities for Pharaoh. Amen. And, all, and after all the work, all they got was another beating. It was, a da- it was a bad day for them. It was a rainy day, if you will, for them. And, and when finally Pharaoh let them go, amen, they, they, they started off out of Egypt. And the Bible said that Pharaoh changed his mind, and he went after them. And, and, and when he went after them, amen, they got to the Red Sea. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand, or stretch out your rod. And when he stretched out the rod, the Red Sea parted hither and thither. And the children of Israel went through on dry land. When they went through on dry land, uh, the Bible tells us that Pharaoh, his heart was hardened. And he sent his armies after the children of Israel. And, and, and what something really neat happened. The Bible said that there was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night that led the children of Israel. And when they started in that Red Sea, and they started across that Red Sea, and the Bible said that Pharaoh's army started coming behind them. The Bible said that the pillar of cloud went from the front of them and got behind them. And it turned dark on Pharaoh's armies. And all of a sudden, the Lord began to afflict the children of, or children of Egypt and, or the Egyptians and, and their wheels started coming off of their chariots. And, 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 and all of a sudden they realized we are in trouble because Israel's God is fighting for them. Children of Israel got on the other side of that Red Sea. Moses stretched out his rod again, and down came the water, and the children of, or, or, and the Egyptians were drowned. And the Bible said that the children of Israel saw them no more. 
And this is where we pick up the song of Moses. They, they got to the other side of the Red Sea, and now the waters have collapsed upon the Egyptian armies. And, and the Bible tells us that Egyptian bodies were washing up on the shore. And Moses starts testifying. And Moses began to sing because they were delivered. And his song was nothing more than a testimony. He just was singing about what God had done. He was just singing about how good God had been. He was just singing about the goodness of God. But when Moses started singing, here in a little while, the Bible said that, his, that Aaron's sister Miriam liked the song so much, she picked up a tambourine. And she started praising God. She didn't wait, Brother Josh, for somebody to shout with her. She didn't wait for somebody to get excited with her. Amen. She didn't wait for somebody else to get their groove on. But the Bible said she grabbed her tambourine and began to worship the name of the Lord. You know, everybody that was there that day had the same reason and the same opportunity to start worshiping as Miriam. But Miriam was the first one with the tambourine. She began to repeat Moses' song, and all the women went out after her. One woman began to worship, and before you know it, amen, all the women were beginning to worship. Let me tell you that is so typical of what happens in an apostolic church service. Amen. Why is it amen that so few really seem to have the victory? We come to church. We clap our hands. We thank God for being here. Amen. But, but we really aren't getting excited. Amen. Of the, about what God has done for us. But I'm going to tell you the reason is too often we find ourselves in rainy days. Too often we find ourselves in bad, dark situations, and instead, amen, of seeing the answer and glorifying the answer, amen, we glorify our situation. When you glorify your situation, that's all you'll ever see. But when you glorify the answer, you may be going through it. It might be raining where you're at. But when you quit looking at the rain and you start seeing the answer to the situation you're in and you start understanding that God is in control and God orders my steps and God has his hand on my life. Amen. When you begin to glorify the answer, I'm telling you, you'll get the victory. So many people seem to have problems that they have no solutions for. But I'm going to tell you, there's a solution for every problem. <laughs> when you begin to praise and magnify God, and when you begin to operate in the spirit of praise, I want you to understand things begin to change and things begin to turn around. When you have purpose in your heart that no matter what happens, that no matter what goes wrong, that no matter how bad things get, I'm still going to praise God. I'm going to tell you things will start happening for you. I'm preaching to some people here today that you found yourself in rainy days, but pastors come to tell you God has an answer for the rainy days. If you just start praising Him, He'll change your situation. When Miriam began to praise God, she got over there, and I don't know where they kept the tambourines. I don't think they took them in this church. <laughs> Sister Smith, we got any tambourines? No, she's done outlawed them. I don't know where Miriam found the tambourine, but she found the tambourine closet. And she went in there and she got a tambourine. And she started shaking that tambourine. 
she started having herself a time. And before you know it, all the women decided, if Miriam can do it, so can I. And they started praising and they started magnifying God. Hey Amen. I'm going to tell you, when you, you someone said, well, I, I want to praise God, but I'm waiting for somebody else to do it. Quit waiting on somebody else and you be the one that starts it. Quit waiting for somebody else to be the match and you be the match. Because I'm going to tell you something about praise. Praise is easier caught than a virus. And then when somebody will just make up their mind, I don't care if anybody else is going to praise God or not. I don't care if it's dead as a doorknob or not. God's been good to me. When you begin to praise God, I promise you, praise will get on somebody else. If you want a revival, you start being the praise leader. Things we face every day will change when you start praising. Your emotions will change when you start praising God. Said, I'm so depressed, I'm so discouraged. Why don't you start praising God? You know, we see people come to church, sit on, sit on a pew, their jaw dragging the ground, and lip fell out, and, 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 and it looks like they've lost their last friend. And they just sit there, and everybody else claps their hand, and they leave the same way they came. But I'm going to tell you something. It is impossible for you to get in the house of God and begin to praise God and leave depressed and leave discouraged and leave with anxiety. When you begin to praise God, you make God bigger than your situation. That's why the Bible said, in everything, give thanks. For this is, a, someone said, I, I'd like to know what the will of God is for my life. I can tell you. You know what the will of God is for your life? In everything, give thanks. On the rainy days, give thanks. On the dark days, give thanks. On the days when things aren't going right, give thanks. On the days when everything's breaking down, give thanks. On the days when people's against you, give thanks. Pastor, how do I do it? Because you understand that is the will of God for my life. Because the Bible said in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. Good God of heaven, I feel the preacher coming up on this platform today. I'm going to tell you, hey man, we put the psychiatrist out of business if we just start learning how to pray. We'd get the prescription drugs out of the church. Get the anxiety medicine out of the church. If we just start learning to do the will of God in our life, which is to give thanks. <laughs> Praise makes a difference. It is impossible to praise God in every situation and still be depressed. It's impossible. You can't get in the church and start praising God. And I'm not just talking about putting on a show, but I'm talking about getting lost in the spirit of praise. I'm talking about you come to church and it's thundering and lightning in your life. But when you walk in here, you realize I've walked into the house of God. I've walked into the house of God. And I'm not going to waste the service. And it might be raining in my life, but, but I'm going I'm to confuse and confound the devil. Come on, somebody. That's what some of you need to do. You need to confuse the devil today and tell him, it don't matter if it's raining. I've come to praise God. It don't matter if it's pouring. I've come to magnify God. It don't matter if the wind's blowing. I've come to magnify God. Devil knows if he gets some of you discouraged, you sit there like a bump on a stump. But why don't you confuse him today? Why 
Don't you make up your mind. I'm going to praise God. I've been depressed and my situation hasn't changed. Let me try God's answer for depression and start praising. Uh, Someone said, well, I I praised him and I still want to cry. I praise him and I still want to have a pity party. Let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about pity parties. Jesus rarely, sh- rarely shows up to them. Matter of fact, I can't find any in the Bible where Jesus visited them. But I can show you in the Bible where people begin to praise. God said, that's where I live. That, 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 that's my living room. That's my habitation. I can show you in the Word of God when people quit complaining, quit murmuring, quit being depressed, and they just said it might be raining, but God's got an answer for that rain. I think I'll just praise. When you start praising, God will come into your situation. God might not change your situation, but I promise you, He'll change you. He'll change your attitude. He'll change the way you feel. He'll change your emotion. Sometimes it's not our situation that needs changing. It's us that needs changing. You know, I've been pastor now. I've been here 24 years in July. And I, I know a thing or two about People that come to church depressed. I've watched through the years. Not not in every situation, but in a lot of them. You know what the problem with people that come to church discouraged with is? Most of the time, they want to be depressed. Oh, pastor, you're being harsh. No, I'm not being hard. I'm telling you the truth. Most of the time, people come to church, they want to be depressed, and they want you to know they're depressed because they want you to have a pity party with them, and they want you to pat them on the back, and they want you to tell them, oh, it's going to be all right, amen, because misery loves company. And I'm going to tell you something about depressed people. Brother John, depressed people can grow a crowd. saying is the truth. Birds of a feather flock together. I'm telling you, you'll find the depressed people in the church if you'll just come and be depressed. Because misery loves company. And if someone is constantly walking around depressed all the time, they will find that there is someone that will always come and cater to their depression. Then that that person begins to feed on the attention that they're getting by being depressed. And then because they crave the attention... They begin to act in a way that got them the attention in the first place. So every day, it's depression. And they like it because it feeds what they want. I'm going to tell you the opposite is true. If depression grows a crowd, praise will surely grow a crowd. Oh, I tell you what some of you need to do the next time someone comes to church and they're having a bad time. You need to put your hand on them and tell them, it's going to be all right. Why don't you get out in the aisle and give God a little shake? Why don't you get out in the aisle and raise your hand? Why don't you get out in the aisle and clap those hands? Why don't you make a lap around the building instead of feeding that depression? Why don't you tell them there's a remedy for rainy days? If you'll praise, God will change it.
I'm going to tell you a person that is full of the energy of God, a person that has faith and trust in Jesus Christ, they'll draw a crowd. Miriam wasn't sitting around sucking her thumb. She grabbed that tambourine. She said, I'm going to worship God if i got to worship him by myself. And she made a couple steps out, started shaking that tambourine. And I, I don't know what she did or how she did it. And I, I don't know how she sang, but I, I just got a feeling. She jumped out there, shook that tambourine, and let out a little hoop. Said, "Woo!" Yeah! Started moving a little bit, started shaking a little bit, started shaking that tambourine and letting out a little praise hoop. Before she knew it, Brother Josh, all the women, all of them were worshiping and shouting the victory with Miriam. I want to tell you, when you come to the house of God, that needs to be the crowd, the type of crowd you attract. Hey, but don't come to church looking for somebody to feel sorry for you, but come to church saying, I wonder who's going to dance with me tonight. I wonder who's going to shout with me today. I wonder who's going to make a laugh with me this morning. I wonder who's going to put their arm around my shoulder. We're going to dance together and shout to the glory of God falls. <laughs> you know, the problem is people... People come to church and they're like they're like kids at Christmas. They they get up under that Christmas tree and pull out a Christmas present, open it up, and said, "Oh, thank you." Then they throw it down, and say, "Where's the next one?" And they get the next one. They open up, said, "Oh, thank you." And they lay it down. They're looking for another one. And every time they lay down the package, the question is. What's next? And uh, a lot of us are like that when it comes to God. We come to church and the Holy Ghost moves. We jump up and down, shout and say, thank you, Jesus. And then we go home, we come back on Tuesday night. And we're looking around and the Holy Ghost moves, and we say, oh, thank you, Jesus. And we're saying, what's next? And we think God's some big Santa Claus with a bunch of presents and a bunch of gifts. And all our responsibility is to come to church and open up the gifts and see what God has for us and thank him for it and go home. Amen. And we do the same thing week after week after week. But I'm going to tell you something. Praise is more than gifts. I said praise is more than gifts. Amen. Praise is a relationship with God. I said it don't matter if I got anything or not. I've got something to be praising God about because I was lost but I've been found. I was blind but I see. Amen. My heart still ticking. I got something to give God praise over today. I'm here to tell you praise is walking with Jesus every single day. It's having a relationship with the King every single day. Stand with me if you will all over the building. God, God, God doesn't want us to live in emotion. I, I've, I've been to some, someone said, well, Pastor, it's not like all you want us to do is shout. No, I don't, I don't, I, that's not all I want you to do, but I do want you to shout. I've been to some churches that all they did was shout. And they were about an inch or a mile wide and an inch deep. That's not the kind of church we want. And I'm going to tell you something. I want you to learn how to praise God in spite of the rain that's going on in your life because you can black the devil's eye if you ever learn to praise God in the middle of rainy days. You know, he, he doesn't want us to be emotional all the time. Some of the, some of the most unstable people in the world, are people who try to live on an emotional high, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to burst your bubble, but I'm going to tell you, life's going to happen. And there's going to be days when it rains. 
And there's going to be days when things don't go the way you want them to go. And if all you're doing is trying to hype yourself up, hey man, to make everybody think everything's going good, you're going to crash. Hey man, but if you ever learn to get this thing down in your heart, I said, it don't matter if it rains or not. I might not like the rain, but I've got a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I'm going to praise him, and I'm going to magnify him, and I'm going to give him thanks, because that's the will of God for my life. And everything give thanks. doesn't want us to live in emotion. He wants us to walk in experience. We need to develop a lifestyle of praise. God doesn't want you to be forced to worship. He doesn't want me to get up here and say, hey, let's worship God today. Everybody, Everybody run a lap. Everybody jump up and down. No. He wants you to have a relationship with him. And he wants you to develop a lifestyle of praise. Amen. God is looking for willing worshipers. He's looking for people that don't need somebody, the pastor, to say, all right, clap your hands. He's looking for people that are willing. Amen. They're just looking for a reason to clap their hand. They're just waiting for it to start. They're just waiting for the music. Amen. They're just ready. They're sitting on Jump Street. tell you, if we don't praise him, heavens will praise him. If we don't praise him, the rocks will praise him. God is going to have something that praises him. David said in Psalms chapter 107, verse number 20, said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Next verse. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. David said he sent his word and healed them. And then he said, oh, that men would praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. God's looking for people that will praise him. God's looking for people that will magnify him. God's looking for people that will give him thanks. The problem is people people don't know their purpose. They they don't know what, what they're here for. They don't know why God saved them. They think all they need to know about being saved is that they're going to heaven. Listen, if, 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 if God's only reason for saving you was to take you to heaven, when he saved you, he'd have took you out. But I'm going to tell you why God created you. He created you to worship him. He created us on purpose, for a purpose. With a purpose. Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure. They are and were created. That's why you were created. For God's pleasure. He don't get pleasure you sitting around sucking your thumb but he gets pleasure at a scene you walk through a rainy day and say I'm going to shout I'm going to dance I'm going to praise I'm going to magnify it might be raining but it's going to be alright God I feel the Holy Ghost on me right now somebody needs to praise God somebody needs to let the devil know I'm a praiser I'm a willing worshiper It might be raining at my house, but I'm going to praise God anyway. Hey, 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 hey. Be still, sad heart. And cease repining. Behind the clouds, the sun still shining. I've come to tell somebody today, it's going to be okay. 
it's going to be all right. It might be raining, but on the other side of those clouds, there's sunshine. It might be raining now, but on the other side of those clouds, it's sunshine. Be still, sad heart, and cease repining. Behind the clouds, the sun's still shining. Why don't you make up your mind? I'm going to magnify God. I'm going to be a willing worshiper. I'm going to praise Him in spite of what I'm facing. Praise God. Thank the Lord for his presence that we feel in this place. Isn't God good to us? To God be the glory for the things he has done. Hallelujah. Amen. Be a willing worshiper. Praise God in spite of what you're going through. Praise God in spite of the rain. Amen. Hallelujah. I... I do apologize for how hot it is in here. But I didn't touch the air condition this time. Um, we're going to get it right in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I'm going to have a, a conversation with the builder tomorrow. I'm going to tell him, you've got to hurry up and get this thing done. This building down here is burning us up. But I, I, I will tell you this. We ought to have plenty of air conditioning up there. We replaced 16 units, $150,000 or $60,000 worth of AC. So we ought to be able to hang ice from the ceiling. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? You know what? This, we don't, I don't like the heat. I'd rather have hot than cold. I know you probably wouldn't, but I, I would. I, it's only about three or four degrees hotter in here than it is at my house. So. <laughs> Y'all are doing this, so I know you've got to be hot, but you know what? Just, just, we ought to be thankful for the good things of God. The old timers, Brother Lanier didn't have any air conditioning. They just fanned and shouted, fanned and shouted, fanned and shouted. So we're just getting a taste of the old fashioned. And then it's not a brush arbor, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a tin box cooking us. Amen, but I, I, I promise you we're going to get out of here as fast as we can. Amen, but uh, just would you pray that, that these cats up here will do whatever needs to get done to get finished. We're ready to get back in there. Amen, we're ready to break that new building in. Amen, we'll have plenty of place to shout, run, dance. Praise God. Amen. Those of you that ordered the coasters from, from the church pews that Brother Francis made, uh, if you'd please turn in your $50 for the set that you uh, ordered ASAP. Uh, Brother Francis will have your order ready for delivery as soon as he receives notice of your payment. So uh, I'm assuming Tuesday night that you'll be here with some coasters. So as soon as he gets the notice from the office that you've paid your stuff, he's going to be, you just come to him, he's going to give you a, uh, your coasters, amen, so please take care of that, amen, Tuesday night, amen, we'll be back in the house of the Lord, worshiping God together, amen, for midweek Bible study, praise God, three o'clock this afternoon, Spanish church, amen, come, amen, let's believe God to pour out the Holy Ghost in this place, so thankful for what the Lord is doing, amen, on our Spanish ministry, amen, we're believing God's just going to let it grow by leaps and bounds, Amen. It's the will of God. It's the will of God. Praise God. Let's bow our heads. Ask the Lord to go with us today. Jesus, I love you so much. Thank you for your presence and your power that's been so evident in this service. Pray that God, as we leave today, we'd go giving you praise and thanksgiving. Lord, we know it's your will for us to magnify you. For in everything, give thanks. It's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Pray that, Lord, you'd go with us today. Keep your hand upon us. Protect us and keep us safe. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Go and the Lord go with you.